Greetings one, greetings all. It's uh, early in the morning. I've been getting up, waking up real early lately for about the last couple of months. I wake up about three, four in the morning instead of my usual six when the alarm goes off. Got a lot going on in my world. Got some stress right now. Um, but I'm sitting out on the back porch having some coffee and a few smokes. And, um, just wanted to give an update on what's going on in my 6x6 world. So I sold my Atex to a friend of mine that lives in northern Wisconsin. Um, never knew that he wanted one. He's wanted one since he was a kid, I guess. And uh, another friend of mine, who's a friend of his, uh, told me that he was going to be going way over to the eastern part of the state to look at a machine that a guy had for sale. Um, the guy was going to do a trade with him, uh, about a thousand dollars trade. Um, he had a four-wheeler. My buddy had a four-wheeler. He was going to trade him straight across for this Atex six-wheeler. And uh, I guess the machine was pretty beat up, holding holes in the tub and and whatnot. I don't know if it ran or anything like that. I didn't get any details from him, but. Um, we were going to make the two and a half hour journey over there to look at it. And then the guy ended up selling it out from under him. Somebody showed up with cash and he went for that deal instead. So in the course of that conversation and the planning of that trip, I mentioned that I had one for sale. So then he got all excited and sent him pictures and whatnot and um, he ended up selling his four-wheeler outright pretty quickly and uh, came over and bought it so <clears throat> he actually got a pretty screaming deal too the more I sit here and think about it um, all the work I put into that Atex uh, Wow you know, good, strong, four-stroke V-twin Briggs Vanguard engine, custom exhaust, all new wheels, all new tires, custom-built axles that I built, one-inch chromoly axles with five lug wheel adapters, um, all new chains, all new axle bearings, inboard and outboard. Um, sprockets yeah all new wiring all new lights <clears throat> spare parts uh, he got it for 1600 bucks and uh, that's a pretty good deal but I'm super happy because um, now I got a friend who has a machine and now I got a, I got a tub buddy. Uh, that sounds kind of bad, but uh, basically these machines are bathtubs with wheels, so that's why I said tub buddy. But now that I say that, it doesn't sound good. But anyway, um, so I got somebody to wrench with and bounce ideas off of. And eventually. When both of the machines are running, um, I got somebody to ride with. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of adventures on here in the future. Hopefully starting around winter because he's super hardcore ice fisherman. And that's what he bought the machine for is to get out on the lakes in the slush and the snow and whatnot. Um, so there should be some pretty good adventures coming up between him and I with our machines. So I'm... I'm super pumped. I'm excited. Um, 
So progress on mine due to the drama in my life right now has pretty much come to a halt. I haven't really done anything. I do need to sell a bunch of my stuff <clears throat> to get some money. And uh, part of that money I want to get is to set aside for that transmission rework kit to uh, prevent my transmission from exploding. That's, that's a must. Um, and then uh, I need to piece together an engine rebuild kit to rebuild the engine. But all that stuff has to be put on hold for right now at this moment until some other business in my life settles down. So, uh, yeah, that's just a quick update. I still have another machine that I'm trying to sell. I have a very rare uh, 1960s Skipper six-wheeler. Um, I don't know if I talked about it at all, but Apparently, there was less than 1,200 of these machines ever made. Um, the Skipper Corporation, I guess, also made snowmobiles, and I think they're as equally rare. I have never seen a vintage Skipper snowmobile, and I'm, on, I'm a member of some um, vintage snowmobile forums. Um, I have an all-original, complete, unit minus the wheels and the seat those are usually the first things to go to hell on these things because these machines usually sit outside in the elements and the tires end up dry rotting and back in the day they used those balloon tires where the wheel was part of the tire um, it was like a throwaway tire wheel combination um, so all of those obviously dry rotted and cracked and, and were shot and the seat is usually just a piece of plywood with some foam on it wrapped in vinyl and if a machine sits out in the elements those rot away pretty quick so <clears throat> the seat and the tires are shot but everything else is there numbers matching uh, engine driveline uh, granted it it needs a rebuild and that's what I was in the process of doing prior to finding the Argo um, I had resigned myself to use that machine as my as my uh, workhorse so I was in the process well you've seen the videos if you've been on my channel I was pulling axles and bearings and having to cut stuff out with a torch and yeah so the machine is currently for sale if anybody's watching this and they're interested, um, send me a message or whatever. Um, my email is thundergecko at yahoo.com. And uh, gecko is spelled G-E-K-K-O. And uh, yeah, it's up for sale. I want it to go to a good home. Uh, I thought I had a sale with a company that is trying to start a museum or is in the process of, of having a museum for these vintage amphibious ATVs and I've been in contact with them um, turns out they have a machine already they have one of these in their collection <coughs> and uh, theirs apparently is in better shape than mine um, so they're going to keep theirs and decline purchasing mine. Um, I asked what the value was because I figured they were the experts. I asked what the value was of my machine. And they really shot me a lowball price. And I don't agree with it. Um, so uh, they also have tracked down the owners, the original owners and founders of the Skipper Corporation. They've been in communication with them, uh, talking about these machines and actually been able to get some literature regarding the machines. So uh, I'm going to source that literature and check it out, and print out copies and whatnot. And then I'm going to try to get a hold of the, the founders 
and find out if they'd be interested in buying my machine. Um, I guess they're they're looking for some of their machines um, here in the twilight days of their uh, existence. They're looking to to get some of their machines back for a collection or whatever. So uh, I think I'm going to get in contact with them and see if they'd be interested in purchasing mine. If not, it's up for sale on the interweb, and it would be a great vintage restoration project for somebody. Um, I'm pretty sure the engine runs, uh, looks to be in, in really good shape, um, and uh, the, thing could, the thing could come to life again in the right hands. But I want it to go to a good home, somebody that's not just looking for a machine to modify and chop it up and and beat the hell out of it because it's it's literally in the amphibious ATV world it's literally like finding an old Duesenberg in a barn so that's kind of where we're at right now uh, I don't really plan on doing much with the Argo right now other than uh, piecing together that engine rebuild kit parts that I need to rebuild the engine uh, Right now, I got a lot of other drama in my life that I got to deal with. So, uh, but I'll check in and post videos as new developments occur. So, uh, stay tuned. We'll catch you all on the flip side.